when we bring this tool out, it gets a lot of attention. Uh, it's very interesting. It kind of looks like a dinosaur. It kind of looks like a dog. And some people might even say it looks kind of cute. But I want to emphasize that this is a device that we're going to use in some of the most dangerous uh, challenging public safety situations that we face as a region. This is the kind of thing that will go to disasters, man-made and natural disasters. Situations where there may be explosive devices or an armed suspect. This is a tool, it's not a toy. It doesn't learn. It doesn't have artificial intelligence. Spot is not meant to confront anyone. No matter what I try to do, if I push forward and try to drive this into you, it won't go into you. It, the camera senses it. What this robot does is travel better. It goes up and down stairs better. It's quicker. Uh, it has some collision avoidance. Anywhere where a person shouldn't be, this robot can go. Uh, we're here at the airport because we wanted to uh, emphasize the uh, new tool that the Port of Portland has that is going to be utilized by the Metro Explosive Disposal Unit. So it's a multi-agency uh, organization that addresses specifically uh, dangerous situations, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, but we wanted to emphasize that first and foremost. Um, I think the first thing that we want to say is that while, you know, when we uh, bring this tool out, it gets a lot of attention. Uh, it's very interesting. It kind of looks like a dinosaur. It kind of looks like a dog. Um, and some people might even say it looks kind of cute. But I want to emphasize that this is a device that we're going to use in some of the most dangerous, uh, challenging public safety situations that we face uh, as a region. Uh, this is the kind of thing that will go to disasters, man-made and natural disasters. This is the kind of thing that we'll utilize for situations where there may be explosive devices or an armed suspect uh, or another situation where um, we don't want to put police officers and members of the public uh, at risk of uh, being hurt or killed. Uh, so this is a tool. It's not a toy. Uh, and I think that's one of the first things that we want to emphasize here. Um, people will be seeing this deployed in uh, significant public safety tactical situations throughout the metro area. And so our goal here is to introduce it to the public so people know what it is, what it's capable of, of, and also what it's not for, what its purpose is not for, which we'll get into. Uh, so I'm going to introduce uh, Captain Brian Ossenkopf with the Port of Portland Police Department, and then he'll introduce uh, Sergeant Jim Dufresne from the Portland Police Bureau uh, to talk about SPOT. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for taking the time today to come out and learn about this tool, this new technology here at PDX, and how it'll help me do or the Metropolitan Explosive Disposal Unit perform their jobs. The Port of Portland Police Department is one of the founding members of MEDU. For 50 years, we've been contributing personnel and resources to this multi-jurisdictional team. And because of that, we're happy to help acquire this robot. It's been configured to work with technologies here, specifically at the airport, which is a complex environment. This, this tool will help members of MEDU and the traveling public surrounding communities be safer. And with that, I'm gonna introduce Sergeant Jim Dufresne, who can come up and, and talk about this tool and uh, take questions. And I think you can do a demonstration, right? Uh, Sergeant Jim Dufresne. Thanks, appreciate it. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jim Dufresne. It's Jim, J-I-M, Dufresne, D like David, E, capital F like Frank, R-A-I-N. I'm here with several members of the uh, Metropolitan Explosive Disposal Unit and some of our explosive detection canines, and they'll be available if you want to talk to them or get any video. Uh, my position is team leader of the Portland Metro Explosive Disposal Unit, or what we call the MEDU. The MEDU is the regional bomb squad for the Portland Metro area, which includes PDX. Our team consists of 16 nationally certified public safety bomb technicians and seven explosive detection canine teams from eight member jurisdictions. Our technicians and canine handlers come from a number of agencies throughout the region, including the Port of Portland Police, the Portland Police Bureau, the Vancouver Police Department, the Clark County Sheriff's Office, the Gresham Police Department, the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or the ATF. 
Our multi-agency team structure has been in place for over 50 years, and each agency shares resources and personnel throughout Portland and the surrounding counties. As one of the founding member agencies and the stewards of this critical regional infrastructure, the Port of Portland has contributed significant personnel, training space, equipment, and leadership to our team. The MeDo has utilized robots in our work for over two decades. These robots are used primarily for investigating and disabling hazardous and potentially hazardous items without sending a human into that dangerous environment. As public safety tactics have evolved, so have the use of robots in policing. Our team is regularly called upon to deploy robots as de-escalation tools during critical incidents where suspects are armed and it's unsafe for police to approach. Our robots are used by trained negotiators who speak and listen directly to a subject without approaching, which leads to better, safer outcomes for police, the subject, and the community. The team also trains to operate robots as rescuers in hazardous and confined environments, such as following a natural or human-caused disaster. We can attach specialized monitoring systems to measure things like air quality and find people with less risk to responders. The idea to pursue this grant funding for SPOT came a couple years ago as our team was working closely with the Port of Portland on a number of safety measures and response protocols. The team here at PDX allowed us early access to the new terminal area to conduct some scenarios where we would respond with robots. What I think the public doesn't understand is behind this beautiful terminal is a very busy city made of concrete, steel, and radio waves. The access back there is not always optimal, and our standard robots can have a difficult time, both moving around and maintaining contact with their controller. The thing about SPOT is that unlike our current robot fleet, it was designed for industry. Its main use case in factories is to walk a pre-planned route carrying inspection tools and checking gauges. So those types of abilities are a natural fit for a location like the airport. In addition to having some remedial collision avoidance, it uses its cameras to create a map of safe ways to walk. The communication system between the controller and a robot is designed for this type of construction, and the robot is able to drop repeaters along the way to maintain communication with the controller. As a regional team with a large service area who responds to over 400 calls for service each year, we are eligible to apply for a number of federal grants. SPOT was purchased using the DHS, or Department of Homeland Security, FEMA Urban Area Security Initiative, or UASI grant, which is dedicated to terrorism prevention and response. The port was able to utilize that funding and help fill a significant capability gap in the region with no direct cost to our local jurisdictions. So I'm happy to answer a couple of questions if there are any, but really I think you're here to see the dog robot wander around. Um, so we will do that. And at the end, if there's any members of the media who want to drive, we'll let you drive and put yourself on camera, do the whole thing. It's not that complicated. So uh, I'll take any questions if there are any. It is in tandem with that. We have a fleet of robots that we use across the region. This is one of them. I'll give you an example of what we use this for. I think everybody's been paying attention to the ballot box uh, devices that were placed all over the place. Um, this robot, this particular robot, was used on the first one of those. Um, and the fact of the matter is, we show up at about 5 o'clock in the morning. There's churches and high-rise residences there. There's people around. Um, the ballot box is smoking. And at the time, we weren't sure what that was. Uh, we're much more aware of it now. But our only real option was to use this robot to go down range and grab that. Um, and move it to a safe place so we could transport it. The bonus of a robot like this, and you can see tracks, the most dangerous thing to this thing is a high curb, or you, know, you can high center it, or if there's some clothes on the ground, it gets caught in the tracks. It's a fantastic robot. We've had it, I think, for 10 years, and we'll have it for another 10 years. What this robot does, and it really is, I mean, it kind of looks like a dog, but it's uncomplicated. What it does is travel better. It goes up and down stairs better. It's quicker. Uh, it has some collision avoidance. And it's very similar. I didn't think about this till lately, but it's similar to like your car. Uh, it just senses, it has cameras. And in your car, when you are gonna go over the white line on the side of the road, it does the same thing. When it recognizes that there's a person or something in front of it, it will stop and give you an alarm and kind of just move the correct way so it doesn't cause itself any damage. When you're trying to drive these things from 
300 yards away and they're completely out of your line of sight and you have that ability just to go forward and have the robot work out those problems, that is an enormous improvement for us. It gets us able to get these things out of the way faster and then return the community back to a sense of normalcy as quick as we can. Spot is, is not meant to confront anyone. Uh, the kind of thing that we use these robots for is delivering phones to people um, who may be in a position where they're armed and we can't approach. That is probably the most common use case outside of the bomb disposal part. Um, it also has a two-way communication system. So we can walk it up and just talk back and forth. We have hostage negotiators, you know, that can just have a communication platform where no officer has to go down and deal with somebody who may be armed at the time. And that's the same thing we use these for, um, yeah, real routinely. No, you, you know what? You probably won't see this thing unless you're a bomb or you have a, a gun and you're scaring everybody. Um, otherwise, it just probably, it, it, you know, we try, I, we all know that you know it's an interesting thing, so we got to be here. But we really try to to stay out of the limelight a little bit if we can. Um, you may see it at shows, or you know, if we go to a school and want to show kids how to how to run robots. But for the most part, you won't ever see it like just roaming around the airport. No, uh, as a regional team, and this is the grant funding is for the Portland Metropolitan Statistical Area which is essentially the five counties surrounding. And so the use of that grant, part of the deal is you use that robot anywhere in those counties. So it's a regional asset. Uh, the original design of it and the original choice of it was as they were creating the new airport, we recognized that we needed a better tool. However, this tool is great in a million different ways. And so it'll be used in those, you know, anywhere where a person shouldn't be, this robot can go. It will only be operated by the Metro Explosive Disposal Unit. So one of those eight agencies who has a member that is a bomb technician will be the only people to operate this. It is less capable in some ways than this. Um, the arm is a little bit wonky. You know, it's, it's not quite as easy to use some parts of it. It has worse night vision than this one does. These things are all trade-offs. We have another larger robot than this. And so you kind of just fit the tool for the job. And I don't think this is going to get used all the time, but there are some really specific times where we're really going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of talked about how this is like a car a little bit. It knows if it's going to run into the wall. No matter what I try to do, if I push forward and try to drive this into you, it won't go into you. It, the camera senses it. So we have problems occasionally when we first got these, like going up a set of stairs that weren't quite standard, or if you got a little off kilter, we would maybe flip this thing over and then it's impossible to recover. This has a library of doors in it and it has a library of stairs in it. And so if it recognizes that type of door or that type of stair, it can easily traverse it. And in a minute, I'm gonna walk up those stairs and if I, and I love this robot, I don't want to say a bad thing about it because it's saved a lot of people's lives. But if I do this, it's the tortoise and the hare. Um, if I ask him to climb those stairs, five minutes from now, we'll be waiting for those stairs to get climbed. When I turn this and point it toward the stairs, it's just going to climb the stairs. And so it's really impressive that way. That is the most significant uh, part of it is just the ability to traverse, you know, different terrain and do it quickly. Yes, and I'll show you in a minute. We'll pick some stuff up. Um, it does some things, and I don't want to say automated, but some things it has programmed into it. It doesn't learn. It doesn't have artificial intelligence. Like it will be as dumb two years from now as it is right now. It's all in the person that drives it. It can drag about 50 pounds, and it can pick up about 10 or 12 pounds. Uh, is not as fast as you can walk, and I'll show you here in a second, but it goes about a decent walk pace. 
this, the robot itself, so the grant was for $300,000. Um, and the robot itself is about $150,000. And then there was some other capital improvements that had to go into that project to have the robot ready. Uh, this color is to celebrate the Portland Airport, our friends at the Portland Airport. It's also, as you'll see, the port uh, explosive detection canines have this nice collar. Uh, I don't want to pretend this thing is a dog, but I also am not going to miss out on an opportunity to put a little port collar on it and make it cute. Anybody else? Spot is the Boston Dynamics name. We don't name robots um, because we send them to do horrible things and I don't want to have any emotions about it. So we just don't in general name our robots. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to have one of our explosive detection canines come over here and sniff these bags. And we're going to try to look at this as the type of scenario we might see here where there's a suspicious item that we want to move out of the way. So I'm going to have Officer Barry and Canine Jackie come over here and do a little sniff. You may recognize Canine Jackie from Instagram. Safety is our highest priority at PDX. I'm Chief Wallace with the Port of Portland Police Department. Please help. So that's an indication from Jackie that surroundings that, that is a suspicious package. Bags or suspicious behavior to airport authorities immediately. Thank you for helping us keep PDX safe and secure. As you can hear, it gets a lot of attention. So, all right, I'm gonna climb the stairs back here. 